Hi everybody, welcome to another video. This is my third sample for the fabrics that are on sale on the hashtag BHM Pattern Designers Challenge website. If you are joining for the first time, my name is Kira, Island Socialist on Instagram, and my blog is islandsocialist.com. This year, 2021, I am your co-host for the hashtag BHM Pattern Designers Challenge, and our host is the lovely Natida of So Natural Day. Now, Natida started this challenge back in 2019 with the assistance of Myra Wants to Sweet on Instagram. And the purpose of the challenge is to highlight black pattern designers during Black History Month. Now this year, Natida has a little something special over on her website. So she designed these three prints. The other two would have gone already and this is my third make. So she designed these with the help of an illustrator, Alicia Jones. I have her information down below. And there are also some other goodies that I can pick up on the website as well. So this one is the navy background with purple flowers and the base I chose is combed cotton. I almost said brushed cotton but it's not brushed, it's combed cotton, it's 100% cotton and this is the one woven base that is being offered on the website. So for this fabric I wanted to go a little bit more dressy, I just found that it would suit the fabric better. My other two looks were kind of casual. This one is pretty dressy. This is the Tory wrap coat by Montoya Mayo. Gosh, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, Montoya. But Montoya is one of our sponsors. Um, she was a sponsor last year as well, which means at the end of the challenge, when we choose our random winners, one of you could possibly win something from Montoya's site. And that includes this pattern, the Tory wrap coat. Now, right off the bat, you could tell that mine doesn't really look like a coat, and that's for obvious reasons. I have no purpose for a coat. I have actually made a fur coat before, and I thought that for Christmas 2020, I would be traveling to somewhere cold and snowy, so I would need my fur coat. Anti-run happened, so I have absolutely no need for a coat. So I decided to go the route of a peplum top, and as you can tell, mine is sleeveless. So the funny thing is, ever since I've had to start doing full bicep adjustments, um, I've kind of been avoiding woven sleeves. And it's really funny because I would tend to stay away from sleeveless because of my arms. But now I find I'm doing the opposite when it comes to wovens. Unless it's like a flared sleeve. I avoid it. So for this, I went with the sleeveless. There are three different views that you can make and I'll have the images up on the screen. You have two bodice options, the one with the sleeves and the one without, and then you have three skirt options. So view A is the shorter skirt and then view B is kind of medium and then view C is that gorgeous long high-low version that you're seeing Montoya wearing right now, that beautiful yellow one that just looks gorgeous on Montoya's skin. That is obviously the image that drew me to this pattern in the first place. Another major plus of this pattern is that Montoya has a sew along on her YouTube channel which is what I used to sew my pattern. So here are the changes that I made to mine to customize the fit. The first thing I did was shorten the body's one and a half inches, very very necessary for my short torso. Then I used view A skirt but like I said, I have no need for a coat. Um, I wanted more of a top length. So I shortened view a skirt by five inches. And when I insert my photos, and also you would have seen from the thumbnail um, where this hits me, it hits me at about hip length. Now the sleeveless armholes are finished with bias binding. I didn't have matching bias binding. And to be honest, I wasn't in the mood to make <laughs> bias binding either. So I used some chocolate brown bias binding so that I will blend into my skin tone. For some reason, I don't know what I did wrong, but for some reason, one side, the bias binding is narrower than the other. Obviously, I used the wrong seam allowance on one side, but there's absolutely no way for you to tell from the outside. As you can see, there is a tie sash and there were belt loops on the pattern, but I omitted the belt loops. I think what I will do is add thread loops instead, but right now I just have it pinned to the mannequin. I'm also considering just leaving it like this because this actually looks really nice open as well. I think I have a photo of it just open without the sash. 
So I'm thinking for me, the sash could be optional. So I might just omit the loops altogether. Another thing I forgot to mention is if you are shortening the bodice or the skirt or both like I did, make sure to shorten your collar. So I did shorten my collar piece to match the adjustments I made. So for this pattern, you have front and back bodice, front and back skirt pieces. You have your sash and then you have your collar piece and your collar facing piece. I'm thinking that this could look really cool with color blocking. So if you have two complementary fabrics, you could probably use one on the facing. So you'll have a nice little contrast. So that's an idea if you're thinking of making this pattern for the challenge. Now, in terms of sizing, the two wrap coat goes from extra small up to 2X. That's a bust measurement of 30 inches up to 49 inches. However, I feel the need to mention the finished bust measurements as well because that did impact which size I made. So the finished bust measurement go from 37 inches up to 55 inches. So as you could tell, there's a good bit of ease in this pattern. That being said, I made sure to do a mock-up. So I made a mock-up of the just the bodice piece. Um, I started with the large because that's where I fell on the body size guide. I kind of suspected from the finished garment measurements that it would be way too big, <laughs> but I decided to make the mock-up anyway, just to see exactly what the fit was like and to see if I needed to make any other adjustments. So as I suspected, the large was too big and I ended up going down to a medium, which fits perfectly. I only made length adjustments and the width is fine. Remember at the end of the day, it is a coat, even though I made it to look like a top, it is supposed to be a coat. So you have to keep in mind that if you do go down a size, it may open at the chest a little bit more. I wore mine over tank top, so that was fine for me. And because it is a coat, the armholes are not the most fitted armholes either. So that's something to keep in consideration. Now, I would always wear this over tank top, so none of that bothers me at all. Now you do have the option of folding back the collar to form this lapel look, which is what I did. So I don't know if you can see here, but this is where the collar is joined and it is folded back onto itself. And then you have the ties. So I really love the style of this. Um, this surprised me both in terms of the pattern and the fabric. I ended up loving this make a lot more <laughs> than I expected to. I really like the silhouette on me, even with the sleeveless. So I styled mine with jeans and heels. Not that I have anywhere to go, <laughs> but that is the way I would style it if I did have somewhere to go. This is like that typical nice top jeans and heels type of look. So I had two yards of this basic combed cotton fabric and I didn't have enough left to do anything with after. I think you need three yards for the smallest, um, the shortest skirt. It's raining. I think you need three yards for the shortest skirt piece, but because I knew I was doing sleeveless and because I knew I was shortening both my bodice and my skirt, I knew that the two yards would be okay and it was just right. So for me, this was like a zero waste project. Let me quickly show you the back of the pattern. Now my mannequin, her measurements are smaller than mine. And I actually don't have her opened out either. So right now she's like on the smallest she could possibly be. So this is not showing you the exact fit. This is also a little bit creasy from when I sat in the vehicle to drive to the photo shoot. But this is how it looks. It has a slight high-low effect in about the slightest. The back is just a smidgen longer than the front. So yeah, you have this nice wide um, circle skirt vibe going on at the bottom. So it's fitted at the top and then you have the circle skirt and the sash to pull anyways. Really, really nice silhouette. So I absolutely love this Tory wrap coat pattern. This is another one that I put in a folder right away, knowing that I would probably make this again. Now, I do have some good news for you. Montoya, as our sponsor, she has a coupon code specifically for this pattern i'll put the code on the screen and the code expires at the end of february so it's running throughout the challenge so make sure if you want to grab this pattern you do so now before the code expires you can get a little discount now i do have a blog post with information about the challenge information about the shop and all the coupon codes that we have available to you guys from both pattern designers and fabric shops so i'm going to leave the link to that blog post down below also, my um, personal 
BHM page where I talk about the history of the challenge, the sponsors, the list of patterns that you could choose from, all that good stuff. I'll have that linked down below as well. And if you feel inspired by any of my samples and you want to pick up these fabrics or the labels or the pins or any of the goodies on the shop, I have an affiliate link I leave down in the description box below, which means if you purchase through my link, I will earn a small commission and no extra cost to you. And of course, if you do, I appreciate you. So that's it for today's video. I am gonna insert my photos now so you can see what this looks like on. This is my final make of my three samples, which means everything else you see from today onward, I'll be making live and direct in the month of February. So I will be participating in the challenge with you guys. So I hope you will join us. Let me know if you've picked your pattern or fabric already in the comment section below. Let me know which of my samples was your favorite. I'm still having a hard time choosing between this and the hoodie, but a girl can have two favorites, right? So thank you so much for watching. I will catch you in my next video. I think my next video is going to be my plans video for the challenge. Y'all, my plans list is so long. So stay tuned for that video. I am out. Bye.